Hi guys, this is Frugal. You may remember me from such YouTube channels as Frugal Sim and well, Frugal Sim, really, I'm mainly known as Frugal. SciTech asked me to do an introduction to simulation and show you the bare minimum stuff you need to get flying those big heavy jets all over the world in state-of-the-art complex desktop simulators. So with the aid of a little video magic, we're gonna start from scratch and show you all the things you need to get up in the air flying those complex airliners. This is gonna fall on me and kill me as quickly as possible. Keep watching. All right, that's better. Now you can see me and I can see you. Clean slate, this is what you need to get started. The first thing you're gonna need is some software. So, this is a good one to start with. This is Aeroflight FS. It's a reduced fidelity sim. What that means is the aircraft are modeled really well and the flight dynamics are really good, but you can't do all the complex navigation stuff really all over the world. There is some of that, but not a lot. It's basically a beginner's sim. You can fly gliders, there's some jets in here. There's um, general aviation aircraft like Cessnas and stuff like that, and even some stunt aircraft like the Pitts one on the front here. The next step up from that would be that one, the phenomenal and ubiquitous Microsoft Flight Simulator 10, or FSX. Most of the videos you see on my channel are about this. This is the de facto standard for simulation. Now, if you get this, get the gold edition. Comes with a number of add-ons, comes with all the service packs built in and everything else. This will let you fly anything anywhere in the world, but Bear in mind that if you want to fly the complex stuff, you typically need to buy extra aircraft and add on to this. There's also an update to this, kinda. Lockheed took over the license for developing this, and they have something called Prepared, which is spelled P-R-E-P-A-R-3-D, of, of all things. It's a bug fix, updated, enhanced version of this. You might want to look at that as well. But FSX is the gold standard right now. Alternately, let's just put this over here, and X-Plane 10. This is the up and coming one. Now, X-Plane has been around almost as long as the Microsoft Flight Simulator line. The aircraft are a lot more realistic in this. In fact, the aerodynamics are more realistic in this, but the aircraft cockpits themselves tend to be a lot more basic, and this requires a beefier machine. So in terms of your PC, that's the entry level, that's the next step up. This is an eight-year-old sim, or run on anything, really, if you can tweak it. And then this one, you need a fairly beefy PC for this, but if you're learning to fly for real, you might want to look at this one. Both of these, in fact, all three of these come in demo form. You can go and download demos. So, explain FSX, Aerofly FS. Pick one, get the demo, install it, see what you think. The next thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a controller. Now, SciTech have you covered there. Let's start at the bottom of the price range with the V1. This is the V1. This is SciTech's entry-level joystick. It's pretty cheap, it's about $29. Doesn't cost that much. You can use it for flying, you can use it for combat stuff like MechWarrior, also Elite Dangerous, um, the X-Series of Space Sims, Star Citizen, you name it, you can do it with this. It has a number of important aspects to it though, which you're gonna see in all the joysticks that we look at, and that is these. Well, first of all, the back here, that's a throttle. You need that if you're flying planes. You need some method of increasing the power to the engines. Even though there's only one, that doesn't stop you from flying multi-engine aircraft. You just bind all the power levers in the cockpit to that single uh, power lever there, which is, which is great. Obviously, you have the axes of control, or the control surfaces in the aircraft. So ailerons, left and right, which turn or roll the aircraft left and right. You have pitch, so pulling back and pushing forward, which pitches the nose down and up based on how you move the joystick there. But, here's a subtle one, twist. You need a twist on this because most aircraft have a rudder at the back. Maybe the editor's gonna put a little clip up here showing what a rudder is. The rudder helps you in a turn, so you typically roll an aircraft and then you'll feed in some rudder to compensate for the turn. If you don't do that in a real small aircraft when they actually roll over, what happens is you get thrown sideways and smash into the window next to you, the rudder stops that happening. It's called coordinating a turn. So you need a twist. If entry level is a little bit too basic for you, then we got you covered there. Let me just move this out of the way. And this is the SciTech Cyborg Fly 5. Now this is a little bit more complex in that it has two power levers that you can detach. So they can work one, or you can press this button and separate them, then you have throttle one, throttle two, which is great. Just like the other joystick though, the Fly 5 has obviously movement forward for pitch, up and down, aileron left and right for rolling the aircraft, and of course that all important twist for left and right. The other thing worth bearing in mind is the number of buttons on this. All of these, both of these joysticks are programmable. SciTech have their own software called SST, which lets you customize how all of these buttons work and what the triggers do and all that good stuff. The Fly 5, obviously, it's more expensive. I think it's about $60 or $70. 
um, has a lot more buttons. You've got a lot of buttons here, plus all these buttons down here, plus obviously a trigger here. It's got a crazy number of buttons. Importantly as well, the Fly 5 is also customizable. You can just move a, a few little things here and you can change like the height of the stick. There you go. So let's make it taller, or you can move that head backwards and forwards. I've actually got this one a little bit too tight, you can't do that. But this is fully customizable to your hand. The version one, the entry level one, is not. But on the flip side, is actually this. Most joysticks are right-handed joysticks. The V1, however, is not. It's an ambidextrous joystick. So if you're flying an Airbus where the joystick is actually on the left of the pilot, this is a joystick you might want to consider. It fits the left hand just as well as it does the right hand. That is not the case with the higher end Fly 5 because of this ridge right here, which is designed for your right thumb. Okay, now the final step. Let's say that Santa decided you had been good this year and you're gonna get a really nice Christmas present. Let's move these two. Is a full on HOTAS, which means hands on throttle and stick. These things are massive and they have a price tag to match. Here's the Cytec one. Now, I say Cytec one, Cytec actually have three of these. This is the X55, this is the brand new one. They also have an X65 and an X52, and even an X52 Pro version, but they all have basically the same concept to them. You have a joystick here, which obviously again is pitch, roll, twist for the rudder. You have a separate unit which is for your throttles, in this case two of them, engine one and engine two there. This also has a number of rotary controls here and here, as well as here and here, and a ton of switches. The idea of a hands-on throttle and stick is actually a jet fighter concept, but if you're in combat in a modern fighter, you don't want to be looking around trying to figure out which button to press. So it becomes an exercise in muscle memory, learning where all the buttons are under your fingers, but you never need to take your hands off the controls to do anything in the cockpit, from locking a weapon on something, to firing, to adjusting control surfaces to slow down, speed up, land, or whatever you want. That would be a HOTAS. This is the X55. It is the current state-of-the-art from SciTech and costs about $200. So there you have it, a very quick two or three minute introduction to flight simulation. You don't need that mass of stuff that I showed at the start of the video. You can get it, and it's pretty cool if you do. We'll talk about that in a later video, I'm sure. But what you need to get started is just one controller. You can go with something very entry level, cheap and versatile, like the V1 over here. You can step up a little bit and go to the much more versatile and configurable Cyborg Fly 5 over here, or you can go the whole hog and get the Rhino Hotas, otherwise known as the S55. Once you've chosen your controller, all you need is a SIM to install on your PC. Obviously, we have Aerofly as the entry-level SIM. We have FSX as the pretty much de facto standard, or prepared, and obviously X-Plane 10. In the next video, we'll take a look a little bit deeper about how to use some of these SIMs, how to configure everything and get you up in the air. For the time being, as always, my name is Frugal. Thank you, SciTech, for letting me do this video. See you soon.